China just announced reusable rockets to challenge SpaceX. Bold move. But here's what the data reveals. SpaceX has landed over 500 boosters, with some reflying 20-plus times. China? Still testing prototypes with zero operational reusable rockets. The numbers are brutal. SpaceX carries 85% of the world's orbital payload. China launches dozens of rockets yearly, all expendable. And by the time China fields its first reusable rocket in 2026, Starship will have already changed the game completely. This is about economics. SpaceX, $2,700 per kilogram. China, locked into expensive, single-use hardware. The gap isn't closing. It's widening with every Falcon 9 landing. Let's dive right in. To understand why China is struggling, we need to start with what made SpaceX's breakthrough so devastating. Before 2015, every rocket launch meant discarding tens of millions of dollars of hardware. Launch once, throw it away. The space shuttle tried reusability, but was so complex and expensive that it actually cost more than expendable rockets. Falcon 9 changed the equation. When that first booster landed successfully in December 2015, it proved something critical. You could bring a rocket back, refurbish it, and fly it again, profitably. That single achievement transformed space launch from an expenditure into an investment. This is the revolution China missed in real time. While SpaceX was perfecting this capability through years of testing, crashes, and incremental improvements, China's space sector was focused on expanding its expendable rocket fleet. By the time Chinese officials recognized reusability as essential, SpaceX had already completed over 100 successful landings. That timing matters more than most people realize. Because reusability isn't just a feature you can add to a rocket. It requires fundamental design choices from day one. Chinese engineers have access to videos of every Falcon 9 landing. They can study technical papers, analyze trajectories, and examine the basic principles. So why haven't they replicated it? The answer lies in understanding what reusability actually demands. A reusable rocket needs extra fuel to slow down and return. That's propellant that could have been used for payload. SpaceX solved this through precise engineering. Stronger fuel tanks to handle the extra load, more efficient engines to maximize performance, and sophisticated flight computers to manage it all. Then there's the landing itself. Your rocket is falling through the atmosphere at several times the speed of sound. It needs to flip around, deploy grid fins for steering, and fire its engines at exactly the right moment to kill its velocity just as it reaches the ground. The margin for error is measured in milliseconds and meters. SpaceX has refined this process through over 500 landings. Each one generated data. How do engines perform after multiple flights? Which components degrade fastest? What's the optimal refurbishment process? This knowledge base took a decade to build and cannot be purchased or downloaded. China's current efforts show they understand the theory. Companies like iSpace and Landspace have conducted vertical takeoff and landing tests, short hops that demonstrate controlled descent and soft landings. State-owned CASC has announced plans for reusable variants of their Long March rockets, with target dates around 2026. But these are still prototype stages the same stages SpaceX completed back in 2013 to 2014 with their Grasshopper test vehicle. China is essentially 8 to 10 years behind in operational capability. Here's what makes the gap even harder to close. SpaceX's real advantage isn't just technological, it's organizational. SpaceX designs and manufactures everything in-house. Engines, avionics, structures, software all developed under one roof in Hawthorne, California. When an engineer spots a problem during a landing, they can walk directly to the team responsible and implement a fix. Changes that would take months or years in traditional aerospace happen in weeks. This vertical integration creates a feedback loop that accelerates innovation. Fly a rocket, analyze the data, make improvements, fly again. Repeat hundreds of times. Each iteration builds on lessons from the previous one. China's space industry operates fundamentally differently. CASC is a sprawling state enterprise with multiple institutes handling different components. One division builds engines, another handles guidance systems, a third manages structures. 
Commercial startups add competition, but also fragmentation. Coordination between these entities involves bureaucratic processes, formal agreements, and scheduled access to shared testing facilities. An engine problem discovered during a test might require weeks just to convene the right teams to discuss solutions. This doesn't mean Chinese engineers are less capable. They've accomplished impressive feats, including Mars landings and space station construction. But when it comes to rapid iteration on a complex system like rocket reusability, organizational structure matters as much as technical skill. The numbers prove it. SpaceX's 2025 operations reveal what mature reusability looks like. They've launched over 100 times this year alone, more than two launches per week. Approximately 85% of the world's orbital payload mass went up on SpaceX rockets. Most of these missions use flight-proven boosters, with several rockets having flown more than 20 times. The fastest turnaround, the time between landing and flying again, has dropped to just nine days for a single booster. That's remarkable when you consider this involves inspecting a vehicle that just experienced the violence of launch and re-entry, replacing any worn components, and certifying it safe to fly again. China's 2025 launch activity is substantial around 60 to 70 launches across multiple rocket families. But 0% reusability. Every Long March rocket, every commercial launcher, every test vehicle is used once and discarded. Even with lower manufacturing costs in China, this creates an impossible economic disadvantage. Consider the cost comparison. SpaceX's internal costs are estimated around $2,700 per kilogram to low Earth orbit with reusability factored in. They charge customers more, roughly $3,000 to $4,000 per kilogram, depending on mission specifics, but still undercut most competitors. China's expendable rockets cannot match this pricing. Even with government subsidies, the cost of building a new rocket for every launch sets a floor that reusable systems simply bypass. This pricing power gives SpaceX dominance in the commercial launch market, leaving Chinese providers serving primarily domestic customers and countries with political ties to Beijing. There's another dimension to SpaceX's advantage that's even harder to quantify. Operational experience. Every booster landing generates massive amounts of data. Sensors monitor temperatures, pressures, vibrations, and structural stresses throughout the flight. SpaceX has accumulated this data across hundreds of missions spanning over eight years. They know exactly how their systems age, which parts need attention, and how to optimize maintenance schedules. This isn't information you can find in textbooks or technical papers. It comes only from actually flying, landing, refurbishing, and reflying rockets repeatedly. SpaceX engineers have seen problems that only appear after multiple heating cycles. They've identified wear patterns that aren't obvious until you process dozens of return boosters. China is at the beginning of this learning curve. When they start landing orbital class boosters, they'll encounter issues SpaceX discovered years ago. Some solutions will be straightforward, documented in aerospace literature. Others will require creative problem solving and unexpected insights that emerge only through experience. SpaceX also benefited from failing publicly and learning fast. Early landing attempts were spectacular failures, boosters crashing into drone ships, toppling over, exploding on impact. Each failure was analyzed, lessons were extracted, and improvements were implemented for the next attempt. This iterative process compressed the learning timeline. China's space program operates with less tolerance for public failure. There's political pressure to demonstrate success, which can slow the pace of ambitious testing. This cultural difference creates another subtle but meaningful advantage for SpaceX's approach. Just as China works toward operational reusability, SpaceX has already advanced to the next generation. This is perhaps the most challenging aspect of China's position. They're not chasing a fixed target. Starship represents SpaceX's vision for full reusability, both the booster and the upper stage return, and can be reflown. This is fundamentally different from Falcon 9, where only the first stage is recovered. Full reusability could reduce launch costs to approximately $200 per kilogram to orbit, more than 10 times cheaper than current Falcon 9 operations. SpaceX has already conducted multiple full-scale Starship test flights. 
they've demonstrated controlled re-entry, tested the heat shield, and even caught the super heavy booster using the Mechazilla launch tower's mechanical arms. They're developing orbital refueling capabilities that will enable missions beyond Earth orbit. By the time China achieves Falcon 9 level reusability around 2026, Starship could be in regular operational service. China won't be catching up. The gap will have transformed into a different challenge entirely. They'll need to simultaneously perfect first-generation reusability while developing second-generation full reusability just to remain relevant. This creates a strategic dilemma. Should China perfect their current designs or leapfrog directly to full reusability? The first approach is lower risk but leaves them perpetually behind. The second is technically demanding and might fail, but it's the only path to true parity. Some observers see this as simply competition between rocket companies. The reality is far more significant. This is about controlling the infrastructure of the space economy. Cheap, frequent launches enable everything else. Want to deploy a mega constellation of internet satellites? You need affordable access to orbit. Planning lunar bases or Mars missions? Same requirement commercial space stations, space manufacturing, orbital tourism, all depend on dramatically lower launch costs. SpaceX's Starlink constellation demonstrates this advantage in practice. They've launched over 6,000 satellites providing global internet coverage. This was only economically feasible because SpaceX launches its own satellites on reusable rockets at internal cost. Competitors trying to build similar constellations using purchase launches face economics that simply don't work. China has announced competing constellations, Guang with 13,000 satellites and G60 with nearly 15,000. But deploying tens of thousands of satellites on expendable rockets would cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Without reusability, these plans remain aspirational rather than operational. This creates a compounding advantage. SpaceX can iterate on satellite design, launch frequently, and adjust their constellation based on real operational data. Competitors are stuck in planning phases, limited by launch costs and availability. The same dynamic applies to lunar and Mars missions. SpaceX is developing Starship specifically for these destinations, with launch costs low enough to make ambitious missions economically viable. China's space station and lunar program plans are impressive, but constrained by the cost structure of expendable rockets. China does have significant advantages in this competition. The government has designated space as a strategic priority, ensuring funding flows consistently. Access to state testing facilities is guaranteed. Labor costs are lower than in the United States. Political support for ambitious space projects is unwavering. The government has also encouraged competition between state enterprises and commercial startups hoping to inject some of the innovation and speed that characterize SpaceX's approach. Companies like Deep Blue Aerospace, iSpace, and LandSpace are moving faster than traditional state entities, conducting aggressive test programs. But money and political will cannot shortcut the fundamental learning process. They cannot compress 10 years of operational experience into two or three. The iterative refinement that makes reusability reliable requires time, repeated flights, failures, and gradual improvement. Chinese officials clearly understand this challenge. They've set ambitious but arguably realistic timelines. First operational reusable orbital rockets by 2026 to 2027, with plans for more advanced systems by the early 2030s. This acknowledges that catching up will be a marathon, not a sprint. The question is whether being several years behind in a rapidly evolving field creates a permanent disadvantage or just a temporary gap that can eventually be closed. The trajectory for the next few years is becoming clear. China will continue advancing through prototype tests, gradually moving toward orbital class reusable vehicles. There will be setbacks, landing failures, design iterations, timeline delays. This is normal in rocket development. SpaceX, meanwhile, will push Starship toward operational status. If they succeed, the economics of space access will shift again, creating a new baseline that makes even current Falcon 9 operations look expensive by comparison. For China, this creates a race against a moving finish line. Success means not just matching what SpaceX accomplished five years ago, but somehow leapfrogging to compete with what SpaceX will be doing five years from now. Can they do it?
The technical capability exists within China's aerospace sector. The resources are available. The political commitment is real. But the organizational challenges, the experience gap, and the sheer difficulty of compressing a decade-long learning process into a few years make the outcome uncertain. What's not uncertain is the current state of affairs. Right now, today, SpaceX has created a dominant position in global space launch through reusability. They've turned what was once the most expensive part of spaceflight, the rocket itself, into a reusable asset. They've made space access more frequent, more affordable, and more routine than at any point in history. China recognized this revolution and responded with determination and investment. But in space launch, as in many technologies, the second mover doesn't automatically have the advantage. Sometimes the pioneer's lead is simply too great, the learning curve too steep, and the pace of innovation too fast for followers to catch up. The next chapters of this competition will determine whether that's the case here or whether China can accomplish something few thought possible and close a gap that grows wider with every passing Falcon 9 landing. So here's the bottom line. China didn't just miss a technological breakthrough. They missed the economic foundation of modern spaceflight. That $2,700 per kilogram we talked about, that's the price of controlling space infrastructure. SpaceX owns it. China's paying 10 times more per launch with expendable rockets. This isn't just about national pride. Every major space project, Artemis lunar missions, commercial space stations, Mars exploration, depends on the economics SpaceX unlocked. China has ambitious plans, but without reusable rockets, they're building on quicksand. Here's the critical timeline. China targets 2026 for their first operational reusable rocket. But by then, Starship could be flying regular missions, possibly even lunar landings. The gap isn't closing, it's evolving into something wider. Now here's what I want to know. Do you think China should rush to match Falcon 9 or jump straight to competing with Starship? Leave your answer in the comments below. This debate matters because it shapes the next decade of space access. If this analysis gave you a clearer picture of what's really happening in the space race, hit that like button. It helps us reach more people who want the truth, not just hype. This is Space Hub, where we break down the technologies and competitions defining humanity's future beyond Earth. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive. We've got major developments coming in the Starship program and China's response that you need to see. Because right now, one company controls the economics of space. The decisions being made in the next 18 months will determine if that changes or if the gap becomes permanent. The race is accelerating and every landing makes the stakes higher.